Okay, uh, today what we want to do is talk about the fundamentals of probability. Alright, so in this video, we're just basically going to talk about two types of probability. Um, our two objectives are to understand what a theoretical probability is and calculate a few simple ones and then uh, find out what an empirical probability is and compute a few simple ones. Um, in this particular video, we're not really going to get into too much of combinations and permutations and stuff, but as you can see in future videos, probability is based very heavily on the counting principle stuff that we did uh, beforehand. All right. So this video we're going to focus on what's a theoretical and empirical probability and then in future videos uh, we're going to talk about where the counting principle comes in. All right. Now, what is a probability? Okay. So a probability is the uh, likelihood that an event is going to occur. Probabilities are assigned values from 0 to 1. If you have a 0 probability, that means it's impossible. The event cannot happen. Okay, So um, I jump up and do not come down. The probability of me jumping up and not coming down is zero, you know, unless I jump onto something, right? Okay, um, all the way up to one, which is certain. If I jump up, I will come down. The probability of that is one. Every time I jump up, every time anybody jumps up, they come back down. So that's a one. Now, there's all of these different possibilities in between, okay? So the more likely something is to happen, the closer to one it is. The more unlikely it is to happen, the closer to zero it is. All right? Now, our first uh, pro type of probability is the theoretical probability. And the theoretical probability is something that we can actually figure out what the probability is. There's a fixed sample space. There's a certain randomization or weighting to that sample space and so uh, we know basically what's going to happen all right dice rolls are perfect examples of a theoretical possibility the probability of a one coming up on a six-sided dice is a theoretical thing that we can verify with experiments uh, heads flipped on a two-sided coin uh, a king pulled out of a deck of 52 cards uh, the 36 showing up on the roulette wheel when I spin it. All of these things are theoretical probabilities because they um, are all, all of the events are equally likely to happen and the number of likely events is completely known. So we run an experiment, that's any occurrence for which the outcome is uncertain. Roll the dice, pull a coin, roll the ball in the roulette wheel, all of those types of things. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes from an experiment denoted by S. So this is what makes the theoretical possibility, theoretical probability partially possible, is that we actually know what the sample space is. Um, six sides on a car, 52 cards in a deck, uh, 38 slots on a roulette wheel, all of those kinds of things. An event is denoted E is any subset of the sample space, right? So this is anything that we could define. An even number, a spade, um, a king, uh, a red slot on a roulette wheel. Any of those things could be events. Um, sum of the theoretical possible of all possible outcomes is one. Okay? So everything that's possible is going to sum up to a probability of 1 because that's must happen. So if I've taken the sum of all of the probabilities, that must mean that I've covered everything that's possible and so then it has to be equal to 1. And this is going to really help us in a shorthand sort of way uh, calculate the likelihood of something not happening which is easier and then subtract it from 1 to figure out uh, when it might happen. All right. So then how do we compute a theoretical probability? What am I going to do? Well, if an event E, right, and this is our cardinal number, the number of events that would qualify are equally likely outcomes, and, 
And this is what makes it theoretically possible, right? That I know that they are equally likely outcomes. It has a sample space S, and again, this is the cardinal number of the sample space, equally likely outcomes. The theoretical probability of an event E is denoted by the probability of E, okay? So the number of possible outcomes in the event, the total number of possible outcomes, and now you can start to see where maybe um, the permutations and combinations are going to come in handy when we start calculating the total number of possible outcomes, all right? So let's actually do a couple of examples instead of talking about these in general. I have mentioned the dice roll a few times, okay? So here we go. A die is rolled. We're going to assume it's a six-sided die. I'm going to find the probability of rolling a three, okay? Well, if you think about it, the event space for rolling a three is just three, okay? The sample space for a six-sided dice is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that means that the probability of a three is going to be equal to one over six. All right, so that's the answer to A, and that makes us happy. Now, what about an even number? Well, now the event space is 2, 4, and 6. The sample space is still the same six-sided die. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so the probability of an even number coming up is going to be 3 over 6, which is 1 half. And that's the answer to B. Now, let's think about this for just a second. There is only one even number on a six-sided dice, so this makes sense. And half, there's only one three on a six-sided dice. I apologize. There's one three on a six-sided dice. So this makes sense that it's its theoretical probability. There are three even numbers. The even numbers represent half the die. So it makes sense that an even number would come up half the time, because it's half the die, okay? So, hopefully some of these easier probabilities make sense. The problem is, the harder theoretical probabilities not only um, are harder to calculate, but sometimes they can be very counterintuitive. Okay, now, what if you are dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck? Find the probability of being dealt a king. Now, I am not going to list this, but I'm going to say the cardinal number of the event of a king is going to be four. Basically, there are four kings in a deck. They already told us that the deck has 52 cards in it. So basically, all I have to do is, according to my principle, is divide that like a fraction. And it turns out that four goes into 52. 13 times. I want you to think about this. There are 13 cards in a suit and one of them is a king. So basically this is one out of every 13 cards is a king because there's one king in every suit. And so again, this makes sense and that makes me happy. Now what about a heart? Alright, well, the number of hearts in the deck is 13. Okay, and then the number in the deck is 52 again, and so I am simply going to divide that like a fraction, like it told me to, and of course 13 goes into 52, one-fourth, and if you think about it, hearts are one-fourth of the deck, spades are one-fourth of the deck, clubs are one-fourth of the deck, and so forth, right? So it makes sense that the hearts would come up one out of every four times. And that makes us happy. Right? The fact that these things make sense, especially these simple ones, is good as we develop an understanding. All right? Now, that takes care of the theoretical probability. When the sample space is known and the outcomes are known and equally likely. However, <coughs> you can have empirical probabilities. 
This applies to situations in which we observe how frequently an event occurs because we don't actually know how big the sample space is. Okay? What if we were thinking about how frequently I might get into a car accident? Okay? Or what if I was thinking about the frequency here in Florida, I live in Florida, of a hurricane hitting my town or the eastern seaboard and ruining my vacation? Okay? Well, <clears throat> the sample space of that isn't known and it's not, the events are not equally likely to damage uh, me or come across me just because a hurricane forms in the Gulf doesn't mean it's going to hit me. And so basically what we have to do is we have to observe the events, okay? So in a theoretical probability, we can run an experiment, and that's how we observe an event. In an empirical probability, we have to wait for a situation where we can observe an event. Now the nice thing is, is the observed number of times that occurs, n of e, divided by the total number of observed occurrences is <clears throat> n over s is the exact same formula. It's just that I can't roll a dice here and figure out whether the hurricane is going to hit me or not. I need some other uh, way of looking at that. Okay, So if I got hit by three hurricanes out of the last 50 that formed in the Atlantic, then I would say that my observed probability is 3 in 50 that another hurricane is going to hit me. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm a happily married guy, but uh, um, some of you that are watching this video may not be. Well, not happily married, but you may be single, right? And, and so we want to calculate an em empirical probability. So, if one person is randomly selected from the population described above, find the probability that that person is a female. All right, so you go out to the club, what's the probability that you're going to run into a female? Well, if we look in the observed population, females, okay, represent 121.3 million out of a total of 235.8 million people. So the number of females observed over the total number of people observed in the um, country, I think this was, you know, the United States in, in 1990 Census Bureau data, okay? So if you look at that and you plug that into your calculator, you get a .5144 probability. So a little better than half, that when you go out, you're going to bump into a female, okay? Because females represent a higher percentage of the population. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to actually find one that was not married, okay, what you would do is you would take the never married, widowed, and divorced, okay, and you would add those up. 31.7 plus 11.2 plus 13.2. So those are all the single ladies out of the 235.8. And that'll tell you the likelihood of running into a single lady uh, when you go out on a Friday night, which happens to be when I am taping this. And that I will leave up to you to figure out. Okay? <clears throat> Now this concludes the, uh, the differences between a theoretical and an empirical probability. Gave us two different uh, examples of each type, and so that makes us happy. And so uh, go on to the next video where we're going to do a slightly more complicated um, probabilities, but mostly we're going to focus on theoretical, stuff that we can uh, calculate by hand.